Less than 45 minutes from the resort of Naples and in the shadow of Mount Vesuvius in the ancient city of Pompeii lies the Circuit Internazionale Napoli in the town of Sarno, a staple of the FIA Karting Championships and the second and final venue of the 2023 European Gearbox Campaign. Year after year, drivers from around the world have quested for glory in over 40 degrees Celsius. But with the KZ and KZ2 categories in operation, the show is set to be more brutal and physically demanding than ever before. In 2019, the most dramatic final in recent history saw two pairs of championship opponents crash out in the opening two laps. But the paddock is even more competitive in 2023, and there could be even more astonishing battles to settle the scores again at Sarno. With standing starts, exhilarating G-forces and rocket launches off the starting line that see drivers storm from 0 to 100 km an hour in similar speeds to the world's best supercars whilst sitting only a couple of millimetres off the ground, who knows what the drivers will face on track before the chequered flag falls. Let's see the circuit through the eyes of Christian Bratuka. Into turn one and carrying a lot of speed before the treacherous and tricky apex of turn two, which tightens on the exit very rapidly. Progression on the throttle for the chicane where the unprepared can lose positions before a controlled reduction in speed through the tight left-hander. Back on the throttle mid hairpin and a quick left flick before the challenging turn six, where speed and balance are needed in equal measure. Now the driver gets to experience what the engine can really do as the acceleration kicks in on the back straight. But into turn seven, you have to take care not to lock the wheels and to return to the power as soon as you can be brave enough. The next chicane can be hard to perfect as you kiss the curbs on either side of the road, but you really feel the G-force on the left-hander as the car continues the radius into the next left, which opens out on the throttle and shows you how fit you really have to be. You can gain or lose out on the final turn depending on where you line up the chassis and how quickly you can put your foot down. And that's the lap. How are the drivers feeling heading into this crucial decider? The race was in Zuera was tough. Um, I didn't make a good start, so I was already a little bit behind, so I needed to make up some ground. In the end, we had P3. It's of course not the result I was hoping for, but yeah, still leading the championship. So coming, going away from Zuera with a good feeling anyway. So hopefully we can continue with a good feeling here. Yeah, obviously they're really fast. And I think it's good. It's uh, as well a good way, I think they're wanted to go to cars and you see in the past years a lot of drivers they skipped the gearbox class. I think it's a good choice to do one year in gearbox. As well for us it's we we need to push a lot to beat them and to stay stay close to them. So yeah, it's really good for them. Zwer was a very up and down weekend to be honest. When it when it mattered the most we were we were on top. Um, but I made a few mistakes throughout the weekend which could have cost me it in the end and luckily fortunately for me it didn't. We've been putting in a lot of work uh, lots and lots of hours of, of work and lots of effort put in to get to this point. And to say that we are fighting for the championship in KZ2 is, uh, is really nice to say as well because if you would have uh, told me that maybe in the beginning of the season, maybe I wouldn't have believed you. But um, yeah, I mean, we've, we've come very far. Uh, so we're at the last hurdle now. So we just need to uh, keep pushing and doing our best. Of course, the, the ultimate goal is to get to Formula One. But for me, a personal goal is just to extract everything that I can and be the best in whatever category I end up racing in. I think Zwerer was over a great weekend, not obviously the top of what I wanted to win. I obviously wanted to win the race and get maximum points, but I think we definitely took a massive points haul from that. Yeah, you know, it's uh, such a great thing to be leading the championship, going to the final round um, at such a young age. Um, KZ is always something that I've always wanted to do, so it's um, definitely a privilege and something that I'll always look back on um, that, that I've always enjoyed. I think in Zuer, as a team and myself, we had an edge compared to our opponents. I think uh, overall our pace was really, really strong. Here with the KZ, you're learning something massively different. It's a whole new different style of racing, style of driving, and uh, I think that's the most exciting part for me. Obviously, F1 is the pinnacle. Everyone wants to reach there. It's, it is the goal for all of us when we start motorsports, I think. But um, very few people can get there. You, know, you just have to wait and see. And if the luck goes your way, you can achieve your biggest dream. It was my first race in Zuera with uh, shifters, with KZ2 category. And uh, we were uh, quite strong. Every, every heat, uh, also the final, uh, we were uh, really fast actually. We couldn't finish in, uh, 
top five, but top ten was uh, really good to score in the first race of life. I think the path for a lot of drivers, for actually everyone, I think would be going uh, to Formula and achieving uh, Formula One. I think that would be also my vision, what uh, I would try to make, try to dream to go. And um, yeah, starting with uh, Formula Four, like everyone, and then uh, trying to step up. Winning in KZ2 can take you to the pinnacle of Grand Prix racing or one step closer to the Hall of Fame in international karting, so the drivers know how tough it's going to be. Sano will not be kind either, as the intense heat and very grippy surface will test tyres, brakes, chassis and the mental resolve of the driver every lap. With pole in Friday qualifying and wins in all but one race over the weekend, the favourite for both the final and the crown is Freddie Slater. But Max Orlov and Biral Art teammate Christian Bertuka are right behind him, eager to challenge. Pavo Tonteri, Maxim Rem and Thomas Stolchamanis all have points to prove here as well. So in the ultra-competitive KZ2 final, anything could happen. A perfect start for Slater and Bertuka saw the young Biralart teammates charge into turn one ahead of Tom Terry in the CRG and the likes of Rem, Daniel Vasile and the slow starting Orlov. The rest of the field had just one task, stay close and stay on the road. With 36 drivers battling to make progress on the opening tour, it was almost inevitable that the lap would contain some drama. And it did. Samuel Louye went airborne mid-pirouette and the damage sustained would end his race several laps later. The Tony Kart driver would continue for now, but it would be a short-lived renaissance. Slater and Bertuka continued their impressive form up front as they settled into a rhythm. But the dream sadly extinguished for Alex Powell, whose amazing display in Zuera was not to be repeated here. He would rejoin, but would finish at the back. No change at the front, but Biralart were chasing perfection and smelt a dominant final on the horizon. First and second was good, but when Vasile moved up to P3, Ronnie Salah's team was starting to consider a clean sweep of the podium. With the bemused Tonteri caught off guard, Stolchamanis in the energy course sensed that he could repeat the move. But as he made the bid into turn one, it was quite clear that there would be no more compliance from the CRG driver today. There was more heartbreak for Alex Marigliano, as the Marinello driver retired with mechanical difficulties again. And as Norton Andreasen received a warning flag, things went from bad to worse for Prema, as Kian Nakamura Berta also pulled in to retire. Despite the close nature of the start, everybody had kept it clean initially. But now that the race was settling down, Freddie Slater was ruthlessly quick and started to stretch the lead even further. It was all his teammates could do to try to keep up with the Englishman. Sadly, Jorge Pescador was the next big name to fall in his Cali cart. The fairy tale of Zuera, now a distant memory. All he could do from here was watch the rest of the final unfold. Slater was now firmly ahead, but with second still up for grabs, Vasile wasn't content with third and sliced ahead of Bratuka, leaving his Italian partner vulnerable to further attack. Bertuka knew the challenge would come. Decisive defending was needed. And so the Biralart suddenly became significantly wider in the braking zones. It would cost the Finn fourth position. Stocimanis was delighted. Tonteri, not so much. Powell and Luye were still persisting in the hope that fortunes would return to them in some way. The Swiss driver's requests falling on deaf ears. Once again, Bertuka's brutal defensive tactics were becoming a major topic of conversation, and now it was the Latvian's turn to feel the heat from the thing behind him. So as Bertuka blocked and then ran away for a few corners more, the train he had created 
became tough for Stolchamanis to handle. Maxim Rem's brilliant transition to KZ2 would sadly end in misfortune. But there's still Wackersdorf in his native Germany on the horizon. And sadly, he wasn't the only German on the sidelines, as Robert Kinderwarte was forced into the role of spectator instead of competitor. Then, just two laps from home, the Frenchman Thomas Imborg of CPB Sport would become the 10th retirement in a brutal KZ2 final. Back to the drawing board for Sodicart. So, after missing out on a win in a final in OKJ two years ago, Freddie Slater wouldn't miss out this time and became instead a history maker at Sarno, as he became the first Brit to win a European gearbox title for nearly three decades. As Birol Art swept up the silverware on all three steps of the podium on home soil, the party could now begin for the talented team. Jensen Button, Lewis Hamilton, Lando Norris and George Russell all began their quest for Formula One glory as FIA karting champion. Maybe Freddie Slater is the next in line. Behind the Birol Art bandwagon of Slater, Vasile and Bertuka, Stonchimanis held off Tonteri, whilst Igor Nezov claimed P6. Genis Savico brought the Paralin home next ahead of Jean Nomblo, with Andrea Dalle in ninth and Tim Gerhards completing the top ten. Birol Art didn't just command the KZ2 final at Sarno, they crushed the entire opposition. If you were wearing red and white in Sarno 2023, you were probably having a very good day indeed. Bertuka, Vasile and the new European champion Freddy Slater were soaking up the spoils. The celebrations were joyous, the result was immense. But as ever in FIA karting, the focus is unchanged, as Wackersdorf is still only round the bend. Yeah, definitely. We've put so much effort into into these two weekends of the European Championship since the winter. We've all been pushing so hard, like Ronnie, the whole Bureau Art Factory, my mechanic, my coach, my family. We pushed so hard for this and the results come when you work hard and we were so focused on this weekend. Just consistency was the main thing. Uh, just lots of points in the heats especially. And um, yeah, it was always nice to finish it off with a win in the final. Really, I didn't expect to such a recovery after a really bad qualifying from my part. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, was really nice to know that we had this place thanks to, thanks to everybody, thanks to Ronnie, to Viti, to Leo. And uh, we came through it. We, from P21, we got the second and I think this was like a really good recovery. It's amazing, it's, a, it's an amazing feeling. It's, uh, I'm proud. I'm really proud of this team. We really work really hard for it. And uh, yeah, that's why we are top three. Yeah, for sure. Uh, all day it's been gone well. Uh, just one finish in P3, but uh, I, I did a, bit, a little bit of mistakes. So it did cost me a bit of, of my pace and uh, went P3, but uh, that was okay. I still went with my head down and uh, didn't give up. In uh, my super hit, I finished in third place too. To be honest, it was a fast pace, but uh, not the fastest to be on top. But uh, I know for the final that uh, we were trying to fix uh, everything. And uh, for sure, uh, it helped us a lot and uh, helped all the team to arrive in the top three in the final. And uh, for sure, it was um, really satisfying finishing like that. Yeah, I'm very happy. I mean, we worked very hard uh, this weekend. We were preparing very well the race. Why two weeks ago we did a the race there and we had, you know, uh, some feedback and uh, we've, been, we've been home and we're preparing some new material to be on the top this weekend and everything went well you know I mean we work hard you know but we went uh, very competitive in uh, you know all the condition why you know uh, as you say it was very hot and uh, when the conditions are like this you know it was even more difficult to find you know a good setup especially for a long, long final like this, 20 lap on, on this, uh, you know, time was very hard, but uh, in the end we managed to, to be, you know, to be well and uh, you don't have any issue during the final with a, with a good speed and, you know. To be honest, I'm really happy of my driver why they are understanding and they do themselves what, what they can do, the maximum they can do without do any, any mistakes and, you know, and then in the end we achieve uh, championship and race and you know 
very good result for us. With heavy hearts and iron focus, the KZ drivers were ready for an exciting climax to the title battle. After all, the last time they lined up for a final here in the European Championship, four contenders were gone in the first two laps. Would it be as dramatic this time? As the legends of the sport prepare for battle, Danilo Albanese and Viktor Gustafsson had been hard to separate over the qualifying heats. Francesco Salenta was in good spirits in third, and last year's champion Paolo Ibolito was on strong form too. With karting legends Jeremy Iglesias, Pedro Hiltbrand and Lorenzo Travazanuto all in the mix, new boy Arthur Carbonell giving chase, and Senna van Walstein fighting to stay in touch after a tough weekend, the scene was set for an epic conclusion. In the drag race for Turn 1, it was Gustafsson who made a better charge than Albanese and held the lead into the first corner. As the gladiators of the sport kept it smooth and controlled on the first lap, Ippolito moved into third ahead of Hiltbrand and Iglesias. Unlike in KZ2, the first lap remained clean, but still just as tricky to navigate. Hiltbrand was eager to add more silverware to Viral Arts weekend and made his first bid halfway round the opening lap. But Ippolito wasn't allowing it to happen. On lap five, Albanese had caught Gustafsson, but with his title opponents down the order, Albanese didn't even need to pass to become champion. And as has become common in recent years, he chose consistency over aggression. Van Walstein didn't have the same luxury. He needed to attack, and as Stan Pex ran wide, he gained a crucial position. A couple of carts ahead, Salenta was finding the battle tough to emerge ahead of former world champion Iglesias. And Carbonell lost patience. He made the move and they collided, putting the parallel driver Francesco Salenta out of the race after what had been an encouraging drive for both chassis and driver. Carbonell would also retire swiftly. Ricardo Longhi showed how the move should have worked with an audacious overtake on Alessandro Irlando, who had made his return with Trego course. Matteo Vigano also sneaking ahead. Matte Plus was not going to reach the finish this time. And nor was the Italian ace Matthias Torrigiani. But neither driver was prepared to discuss the incident with their opposition in the heat of the moment. Van Walstein was realising his chance to become European champion was slipping away, and for the moment he couldn't quite overhaul Iglesias, no matter how hard he tried. It would take several laps to find his moment and was determined to move into fourth. Iglesias was lucky not to lose out to Hiltbrand, who in turn had to let Stan Pex move ahead. However, there was more to the incident than first realised, and the Spaniard Hiltbrand would suffer yet more bad luck, and his dreams of victory ended in disappointment. His focus now turns to the World Championship in Germany in two months' time. Speaking of Germany, their homegrown sensation, Louis Speck, would have a little more time to reflect as he retired on the same lap. Albanese decided to make a final bid to win, just in case the Swede might stumble at the final hurdle. But the reigning world champion was relentlessly quick and formidably efficient in defence. It was evident that the Italian would have to pick the European crown over the race victory. And so that is exactly how it ended. CRG picked up a crucial win with Viktor Gustafsson, which stands them in good form ahead of the World Championship in Germany in eight weeks' time. But in second position, Danilo Albanese finally took his rightful place in the FIA Karting Hall of Fame as a European champion. Countless Italians have shown their credence to fight for glory, and only a few have completed the task. Albanese has been threatening to for years, and now he finally achieves his first KZ ambition. But Gustafsson is a very hard man to beat in a straight fight. And now the two men will clearly continue the battle in Germany.
Ippolito ends his time as European champion in third position, behind the new champion, with Van Walstein in fourth, just missing out. Iglesias and Pex drove well all year, with Giuseppe Palomba finishing ahead of Travazanuto, Longhi and Vigano, with the Italians doing very well at home. It's tough to know who can head to the World Championship in September with the best potential to win, but clearly Sodicart, Kart Republic and CRG all have strong arguments that 2023 could be their year. But in Sarno, it was another triumph for Victor Gustafsson in his short time in KZ, despite the headlines being stolen by Kart Republic, as outgoing champion Ippolito handed his crown to Albanese. But it could be very different when the teams reconvene at Wackersdorf. Well, obviously quite good. Uh, he started off well in free practice. Uh, it was P3, P1, P1, and then something happened in qualifying. Uh, I didn't manage to get a good lap, uh, so P10. Uh, luckily, we could manage it in the heat, uh, get a P1, P2, P2. And then today, obviously, P1 and P1. So uh, more or less a perfect weekend. Uh, managed it well, uh, I think we won it by doing less mistakes than, uh, than everyone else. So, um, so yeah, a good weekend for sure. Naturally, it's an incredible feeling. I think I am still yet to realize it all. But the weekend got off to a good start right from Friday. I've been very competitive since the beginning with pole position, and we won the three heats on the road despite a five seconds penalty from the start of heat one, when several of us moved early on the start. We've always been in attack mode, and today we concluded the finale, let's say almost immediately from the starting position. When you beat guys like Jeremy, Paolo and Victor, it's genuinely very very special. I'll be honest and say it wasn't my main objective. I wanted to be ahead of Gustafsson throughout, so it was a little frustrating. But there was a bigger picture, so I was very calm until the chequered flag. No, for sure a positive uh, weekend for me, but also for the team. Uh, Lucky I was already out of the game uh, after the race of Zuera, so I didn't come here with a, with a goal of win the race. Uh, so the best thing to do was uh, to try to help uh, the team and Danilo to, to try to achieve this great result. We are really happy uh, because also last year I won the European Championship. So this is the second year consecutive for KR Yam. And we are showing everyone uh, that the material uh, is really competitive and we show everyone that for two years consecutive we can achieve this kind of result. First of all, uh, congratulations to Victor because he has been perfect, especially today. And uh, it's a pity for us as a team because we won both final in Zuera and today here in, uh, in Sarno uh, with different drivers, so we show our potential. And, uh, and uh, lucky we, we had a little problem with Victor in, uh, in Zuera and today with Jeremy that compromised our final result for the championship. But anyway, happy with the result and congratulations to KR the drivers for the championship. So Freddie Slater became the youngest ever British gearbox karting champion of Europe and the first from Britain since Jensen Button back in 1997. Having already won the European and World OKJ titles in years gone by, there's no telling what could happen at Germany in Wackersdorf. And after the Birol Art squad completely eclipsed the KZ2 podium, they will clearly be favourites for the crown again. In the shadow of Victor Gustafsson's win in the final, Danilo Albanese finally lived up to his promise and gave Kart Republic back-to-back -back European titles. And by winning the crown on home soil, he emulated Paolo Ippolito's efforts from Cremona in 2022. But as the FIA karting paddock returns there for the OK and OK Junior conclusion in three weeks' time, along with the Academy Trophy, and as Freddie Slater and Danilo Albanese celebrate their success as new European champions, there is also sadness and reflection at Sarno as the sport said goodbye to one of its recently departed heroes, Delano van Hoff.
when we ever come to a motor racing meeting or a karting meeting, we all have goals, we all have ambitions, we all have dreams of where we want to be. We never dream about the sad day that possibly could happen. Delano, unfortunately, as you know, uh, it was a sad day for him, for his family, for his friends and everybody. From all the drivers here, from everybody at FIA, from everybody who's connected with karting, I always call it a karting family. It doesn't matter where we come from, Delano was part of that karting family. If we could just have one moment of silence, please, for Delano and his family, and our thoughts and prayers are with them. Thank you. <laughs>